So, Lone Rider here. And if, like me, you're uh, interested in historical arms and armor, you probably find yourself uh, everything from flabbergasted to annoyed to disgusted to just puzzled at the portrayal of historical arms and armor in uh, pop culture. Movies, film, TV, uh, you name it. They seem to get almost everything wrong from the the type of weapons that existed in that time period or were predominant to how the weapons themselves are used to uh, all sorts of things. Hell, they even get stuff related to bows and arrows and primitive firearms wrong as well. So, why do they do this? And more importantly, would a film be entertaining if they actually got it accurate? Because the main argument I hear, well, there's two. The first one is, Oh, it's too much trouble to get everything right. You know, uh, nobody's going to know the difference. The second thing is, uh, it wouldn't be entertaining if you had a historically accurate sword fight, right? Now, I think that's absolutely bunk. I think having the weapons used properly for that type of weapon and having the people using the type of weapon that was around in that time period, I think would absolutely lead to a really entertaining sword fight. I think it would it would not only be better historically uh, in terms of it wouldn't mislead people about these weapons, but I think even more importantly it would it would just be more fun, right? Uh, and, and as far as the idea that nobody would notice it if you got it wrong, history says otherwise. Um, example from the cycling world: there's not a lot of bike themed movies out there, but most of the ones that there are are known for having some huge technical oopses. Uh, the classic one is Breaking Away, and there's a scene in this movie where one of the characters, the main character actually, is training for a race by drafting a truck on a state highway on his bicycle at about 60 miles an hour. Now, that's possible. It's not necessarily safe, but it's possible. Uh, I've done it, although not at 60, uh, <laughs> at, at slower speeds, and many other people have done it at a variety of speeds at one point in their life. I did it, well, This was back in college when I was slimmer. Um, Here's the problem. Bicycle gears, uh, at least a road racing bicycle from that time period, typically had two front gears. Uh, a big one and an inner smaller one. Um, the big one is where you want to be if you're going at that kind of speed. It's just, it won't be possible with the amount of force you can generate in the smaller gear to go at that speed and sustain it. You would just be spinning too hard and you don't get the mechanical advantage um you would literally be spinning your brains out and not able to keep up the keep up the pace so surprise surprise this movie uh shows a scene where he's drafting the truck but he's in the little gear the inside gear not the outside one and the, i guess the people making the movie just figured well who's going to notice right only a handful of bikers only a handful of cyclists who are really into that sort of thing well, big surprise, you're making a bicycle-themed movie. Uh, people who are really into cycling may represent a small portion of the population, but for that particular movie, they're going to represent a larger-than-normal percentage because the movie is geared towards people who have an interest in that sort of thing. Likewise, if you have a movie that predominantly features the medieval period or the Renaissance or some form of historical sword fighting, well, gee, you think it's going to appeal to people who are into things like swords and history? Uh, yeah, so the average person may not be able to tell you that um, a rapier wasn't held like a saber. They may not know, but uh, people who are into swords are definitely going to know. Here's the problem. You might say, well, people who are into swords represent a very small percentage of the overall populace. Maybe even a small percentage of the movie-going populace. That's true. Until you make a movie that prominently features swords or sword fighting or historical combat. And then all of a sudden, because you've appealed to that audience, guess who's going to make up actually a larger portion of your audience? than they actually make up as far as a portion of the general population. Yeah. Um, and just like the movie with, uh, with the bike gear breaking away, uh, they're going to notice it. In fact, they're going to notice it so much that... Breaking Away, although it's a charming movie and pretty much every cyclist in the world has seen it at least once in their lives, um, it's not without flaw. As the CinemaSins people would say, it's not without sin. And the big sin for most cyclists is being in the little gear while drafting a truck at 60 miles an hour. This is so physically 
out of proportion to what's normally considered possible, that it's it's become a running joke among just about every cyclist I've ever met for the last 40 years, ever since the movie came out. So the question is, not only, well, who's going to notice? Not only are people going to notice, but it's going to become like a meme. In fact, the thing with the gear and breaking away became a meme before memes and the internet even existed. Okay. We would joke about this at the local bike shop because it was so fracking obvious that basically they just, well, we, we don't have an actor who's capable of turning over a really hard gear at that speed. So let's just have him pedal going what appears to be really fast and then just have them, you know, edit in a shot of the truck's speedometer saying 60 or the guy, the guy flashing 60. I can't remember how they did it, whether he was gesturing out the window or whether he was, um, you actually saw the speedometer. But the point is they basically, it was a production concern. We don't have a, an actor who's that good a cyclist. Okay, but then just don't show the gear then. And, and at least you'll be able to make people, when, when you, you know, you want to show a shot of his feet spinning? Fine. Show it, you know, from edge on or something, you know, looking forward or back. Don't show it from the side, broadside, because then you see the gear and you see what gear he's in and you see that it's the wrong gear. This, If they had just thought about it a little more, this would have come off a lot better. But they were, I guess, thinking, well, nobody's going to notice. Same thing with the historical swords and, and arms and armor in movies. Well, nobody's going to notice. Yeah, not unless you make it flagrantly obvious, you know. I'm not, am I going to notice the difference between a great helm that's maybe 50 years, you know, off from the period that's being portrayed? No. In fact, most people wouldn't notice it. Even if people did, they would just put it down to the guy, well, the guy's wearing his father or his grandfather's armor, right? But if you have people walking around with things that are, let's say, 100 years ahead of their time, if you have people walking around with war hammers like the extras in the, in the movie, um, uh, with the siege of Jerusalem, um, kingdom of heaven. There's a famous uh, castle siege at the end, and several of the extras are prominently seen brandishing medieval war hammers. War hammers are for defeating plate armor. Um, at the time period during which that movie is set, people were wearing mostly mail with you know, uh, coats over it. What does that mean? Well, you wouldn't have had war hammers in the traditional sense. They didn't exist yet. Uh, same thing with great swords. To their to their credit, most of the characters in the movie are carrying one-handed swords that sort of look like they're proper. But um, the main character, Balliol, what does he get? He gets a long sword. I, I shouldn't say great sword because that's technically something different. But he gets a long sword, a sword that's clearly a two-handed weapon. Now, <laughs> there's a problem with this. Long swords didn't exist during the period in which Kingdom of Heaven was set. I get why they did it. They want the hero to have an iconic weapon. They just give him a regular old arming sword with a fancy hilt or something, right? I mean, seriously. Oh, and speaking of arming swords, when they are used, a lot of times they're held out in front. Even movies that uh, take pains to claim to be historically accurate, like the Netflix um, Outlaw King about Robert the Bruce, the, the first scene where you see sword play, now granted, they were just, they weren't fighting to hurt each other. They were just fighting you know, to basically prove a point. But, um, okay, so it's a friendly sparring match. They, they were using live swords, but they weren't, you know, they weren't using them right. They were holding them out in front of them like this. And the reality is most of your historical swords uh, work, you're going to be using retracted guard positions. You're going to be holding the sword back or, you know, away from your, away from your opponent. Why? Well, you don't have a lot of protection here. All you got is a cross guard. The sword's gonna the sword's gonna come out when you go to strike, yes, but at that point your blade's threatening your opponent and keeping them away. You're not just gonna hold it like this and let them snipe at your hand. When you do hold the sword out like that, you you're usually using it with something called a buckler. And the the sword comes forward and meets the buckler right before the strike. So right before you're ready to attack or parry, the sword is coming in contact with the buckler, and so that's protecting your hand. Yeah, so then you're holding it out in front of you because you're using it with one of these. I mean, seriously, I, I'm, I, I'm shocked, shocked, I tell you, 
and, and how often the um, the swords of the type of... It, it's not just that they use a sword that didn't exist in that time period, like a long sword or a bastard sword. It's that they're they're holding the swords out in front of them like they're fencing saber or something. And I got to wonder, like, why is that? Now, the only thing I can think of is that they're basing it on more modern techniques, swords that had protective handguards, like rapiers, like sabers, like back swords. And you know what? That would be fine if they were using a rapier, right? Or if they were using a, a back sword or a saber, but they're not. They're using a medieval arming sword. Uh, and, and the funny thing is that you know, the average member of the public might not know or care, but you're claiming to be his, uh, producing a historically accurate film. Why not actually try to make it historically accurate? It, it, does it hurt anyone to go the extra mile to try and do it right? right? You're paying the actors, you know, gazillions of dollars. You're paying the, the producer a lot of money. You're doing this, you're doing that. How about you spend enough money to maybe include a fight choreographer who who's willing to do the fight in such a way that it it looks like an actual medieval sword fight instead of modern people play acting with swords which is how it comes across to anybody who even knows the most remote thing about how these swords were used historically and i yeah i've taken a few long sword lessons but i'm a noob at this i know next to nothing about historical swordsmanship but i know more than these people who make millions of dollars by portraying it on screen and if you've got somebody who actually was somewhat of an uh, an expert or not very knowledgeable somebody uh let's say who's a um a hema or a historical swordsmanship instructor somebody who has at least studied swordsmanship from that period and the swords in particular and how they were used hire them as a consultant Hell, most of them care about how these things are, are represented in, in, in terms of making them accurate. They probably would volunteer, right? To, I mean, if you had the instructor from a, a prominent uh, historical swordsmanship club, he would probably, just for putting his name and the name of his club in the credits, he would probably volunteer to spend a few hours going over your script, just making sure that the weapons are used in a way that's historically accurate, right? Just to get it out there. Because it's important that these things be seen as, you know, what they are and not as how myths have made them. Um, and that, I think, is the, the, the last great myth of um, how historical weapons are portrayed in film. Uh, it's not just that they're using the wrong weapons out of time. Uh, you know, people are carrying uh, big two-handed swords that, that never existed back then, like... Um, in uh, Kingdom of Heaven or <clears throat> Braveheart, but um, that the, the swords they do have, they're not using properly, right? Um, again, you don't you don't fence with a one-handed medieval sword held out like this, generally speaking. All the guard positions are with the sword held back. The only one that's with the sword held out front is long point, and you're threatening your opponent with the blade. Um... And again, generally speaking, if you are going to be holding your sword out front, you're using it with a buckler, right? <laughs> that, that, that protects your hand and allows you to do that. Otherwise, chop, uh, your wife's going to be opening your ketchup bottles for the rest of your life, and your new nickname is going to be Lefty. Yeah. Um, it's Anybody who knew anything about the subject could tell you that. But somehow they make multi-million dollar film productions and they forget to point that out um and you see this in, in the small screen too i mean to be fair it's it's not as egregious there because they probably i don't know maybe they don't have the money to hire historical consultants but i mean classic case was the 1990s fantasy show highlander based on the highlander movies this show had a huge missed opportunity which is since the main character was facing swordsmen from all different time periods and cultures, you had a great opportunity to see how different types of swords from different time periods and different places in the world in history were used side by side with other types of swords. But instead, you had things like, again, people holding a medieval sword out in front of them and fencing with it like it's a modern saber or something like that. Uh, you had people using a rapier, uh, just chopping away with it. Now, to be fair... Um, you do cut with a rapier. It's a cut and thrust sword. It's just favored for the, the 
the thrust. But I could certainly see if your point gets misaligned, you just swing it around and give a chop to bring your point back online. Uh, you know, there are advantages to be draw cuts if you, you know, you thrust, but you thrust past the person, so then you draw it on your way out. I mean, there are advantages to being able to cut with a thrust-centric sword, and the rapier certainly was used to cut historically. It's just optimized for the thrust. It's not as good at cutting, but it could certainly cut, and most of the rapier techniques involved some cutting. But to, to just chop away at it like it's a saber, uh, no, that's not what you do with a rapier. But that's how it's usually portrayed in, in, uh, on TV. I don't. Is this because they're afraid if they use the point that the actor might get stabbed, and even with a blood point, he might lose an eye or something? I don't know. Or if it's uh, they just literally don't know how the sword is used because they've never bothered to consult anybody. Um, but all I know is that you know, watching that show growing up, uh, I thought to myself, this is an incredibly corny program with a with a huge, huge missed opportunity. That could have made it really cool. They could have showcased how different types of weapons were used against each other historically. Or would have been had that matchup ever occurred. Obviously, with these characters living for hundreds of years, the, the, the matchups are out of time. You have somebody from you know, the Middle Ages facing somebody with, let's say, a uh, you know, um, 18th century tool war. That would never have happened. right? Um, unless somebody discovered their great-great-great-great-great-granddaddy's arming sword. <laughs> But, you know, um, nevertheless, it gave you the potential opportunity to see different types of swords from different periods in history and different cultures, uh, how the, their use compared to each other, um, you know, in terms of the characters using them to fight each other. But instead, they all just had sort of a generic movie sword fighting style, no matter what kind of sword they were using. Hell, the main character, McLeod, half the time was using his katana in one hand. Um and I'm not going to diss Adrian Paul here, you know, his as the show went on, his swordsmanship got better uh, for an actor. But the point is that, you're, you know, you're talking about somebody who who was not um, using the sword the way it was designed to be used. With one character, you could fudge that off. Well, you know, the story is he was given the sword by somebody, but he's a Highlander. He's not Japanese, so he wasn't properly trained. The problem is there was an episode in the show where they did show him being properly trained by a samurai, no less, who gave him the sword. But, okay, you could fudge that off with one character. Well, he's not properly trained with a katana. If he's going to continue carrying that sword for hundreds of years thereafter, though, I find it strange that he never took time to go to Japan and get properly trained in its use. Secondly, you could say, well, he's just mixed fighting styles over the years. Again, that would make sense for one character. But to have everybody using a generic movie sword fighting style where they hold the sword out in front of them and use it exactly the same, no matter what kind of sword it is. Uh, tremendous missed opportunity. And I get, you're talking about sort of a goofy sci-fi fantasy show from the 1990s. But the, the point is that, yeah, if I can criticize a major movie, you know, blockbuster Hollywood movie for this, I could certainly criticize something on the small screen. And that's the most egregious example I can think of. Now, there are times that movies get it right, even movies that get other things wrong. Kingdom of Heaven was notorious, again, for having the main character use a dang longsword. But they got combat against the knight, more or less correct. There's a scene where the main character of Balliol gets jumped by a guy in armor, and what do you see? Uh, it devolves into grappling, he pulls out a dagger, and he pops the guy in the face. That's actually how you take down a guy in armor. Right? Um... Most of the techniques, to be fair, are shown being used against people in plate armor. But yeah, if you have a, just a knife or a dagger and the guy's got, um, you know, heavy, a heavy coat of chain mail and a, and a big helmet on, yeah, you're going to want to stab where the armor isn't. Chain mail's easier, perhaps, to potentially get through than plate, which is more or less impossible to get through. Uh, but yeah, um, you're going to want to stab where there isn't any armor. Lifting up the visor and bopping the guy in the face or going through division slits if it's just a great helmet with no visor. That's a legit historical technique. It was also interesting, the dagger they had him use was a quillion dagger with a hilt basically like a small sword, uh, not a rondel dagger. Why? Because it's a later period dagger. Now, I don't know if they were consciously trying to get this right or it just happened, but bravo either way, you know. They got some things wrong, but they got some things right. More power to them for that. The question is, then why couldn't they get the other stuff right? 
and I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, same thing with um, the Outlaw King, right, about Robert the Bruce. They were using the swords wrong, almost completely wrong. But when you looked at the big battle scenes towards the uh, middle and end, they got some of that right. That looked more or less like a medieval battle. People were using shields, for God's sake. When have you ever seen that? And they were even wearing helmets, some of them anyway. Again, bravo, you're getting some of it right. They even had um, people carrying daggers, and they were daggers that were roughly from that time period. Uh, mostly bollock daggers, and then there was a scene where somebody had a rondel dagger. Now, again, this is, when I say roughly, I mean, they might be off by like 50 or 100 years. But the point is, it's not like having somebody in the 1200s walking around with a, you know, 15th century longsword. That's really off. This isn't that bad, right? Um, so, you know, good for them. They got some of it right. Now I wish they would get all of it right. And I think the the arguments against even trying to get it right, I think if they tried, they could do it very simply. Again, the two main arguments seem to be nobody's going to notice, and it's too it'll make the fight scenes not interesting. It, it detracts too much from the movie. Again, I don't think... I think see, if I could see a really realistic sword and buckler fight in a in, in, in a film, oh man, that would be... I would love to see that, right? Google sword and buckler sparring. Um... It, it looks awesome. Why? Because it is, right? Truth can be better than fiction. And, um, you know, yeah, I understand the sword fights or whatever in a movie are there just to further the story. But why not try to make it as real as possible? You know, for most people, if you don't have an interest in this sort of thing, you're not going to go and read up about it. You're not going to get your hands on a reproduction and try swinging it around. You're not going to go to a sword, you know, historical sword club and actually try to learn something about how these work. Uh, if you're just a regular member of the public, in fact, the experience you have with that, how that weapon or that time period or whatever is presented in that movie, that may be the only experience you ever have of that thing. So why not let's try and get it right? Okay? Especially since people are going to notice uh, and doing it right isn't going to detract from the entertainment value. Again, it would be a hell of a lot more interesting. I would love to see a realistic sword and buckler fight. Uh, so far, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Right? And most of the movies that, you know, historical movies that I grew up with, I mean, classic example, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, yeah, a lot of the prop swords were right, or the swords carried by minor characters, and looked like this, but they got the, um, the costumes wrong, they got the bows wrong, they got the, um, you know, the main character's father, had a, uh, you know, again, a, a, a long sword or a, a bastard sword at least. Um, I, I mean, look, it was a great movie. It was fun. It was entertaining. Alan Rickman's an awesome villain, right? I grew up with it, so I can't say all that much against it. Except it was not historically accurate in any way, shape, or form. Now, I know that Robin Hood is basically like a folk hero version of a superhero. He's not. It's not supposed to be historically accurate if it's a Robin Hood movie, in terms of the events, right? It's make-believe. It's folklore. But it is set in a non-time period. Hell, the, 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 the movie opens with, you know, the year and the location. So you're going to tell me, well, it's just make-believe. So the, No, you're giving me a year and a location. Show me weapons that are appropriate to that year and that location, right? A little bit. Just try. Uh, yeah. So ultimately, I think, you know, Hollywood would benefit from doing this. The small screen would benefit from doing this. Uh, the general public's understanding of historical swords and swordsmanship would benefit from doing this. And you might say, well, it's not like getting the facts about taxes or foreign policy or gun control wrong. I mean, it's not like swords are a day-to-day -day political issue that are going to affect the lives of anybody. No, but... I don't believe that ignorance is ever good. I don't believe you can ever say it's okay to be ignorant about that because it's just historical trivia, but it's not okay to be ignorant about this. I think in the long run, we all benefit if fewer people are ignorant of everything and, and knowledge prevails. And what is wrong with doing an entertaining movie that just happens to be a little more historically accurate? 
again, it's still going to be awesome. It's still going to have awesome sword fights. They'll just be more realistic. If anything, it'll be more awesome. So there you go. That's that's my take on it. And honestly, I think the reason that they don't try to pay more attention to getting these things accurate is, again, these two myths. They think no one will notice, and they think it's not going to it's going to detract from the film to do it right. It's not going to detract from the film to do it right. And as far as people noticing, they do notice. They notice with historical swordsmanship. It's been a bugbear for years. And hell, they sure as hell noticed uh, in terms of that bike movie, right? Like I said, the, the drafting the truck scene in Breaking Away has literally been a running joke among cyclists for four decades. All right? So what do you mean people aren't going to notice? Of course people are... Of course people are going to notice. If if people if it's going to become a running joke for 40 years, then yes, people are going to notice. So don't make your movie a running joke. Instead, make it historically accurate. It'll be way more awesome. It'll be way more entertaining. It won't be misinforming the public about historical arms and armor. And it'll actually be getting it right. Sounds like a win-win all around for me. Will Hollywood do it, though? That remains to be seen. Lone Rider out.